This video provides an introduction to Pandoc conversion. As we learned in the previous video, titled Your First Markdown Web Text, one of the advantages of Markdown is that it can be converted into other things. In that video, we used Stack Edit to convert Markdown to HTML, and then we used Dropbox to host that HTML as a single page web text. In this video, we'll be learning about Pandoc. Pandoc is a conversion tool that converts from one document type into another, and of course the primary document type is Markdown. As the diagram shows on the homepage, there are many types of documents that it converts to and from, which is its primary use. John McFarlane, who's discussed quite a bit on the history page of the Markdown Movement site, is a history professor from the University of California, Berkeley, and he's the creator and maintainer of Pandoc, and Pandoc is open source and free to use by all. Of course, this video cannot provide a comprehensive tutorial for Pandoc. There are many other videos and web texts and tutorials available on the internet for all the sorts of different things that Pandoc can be used for. However, here in the resources page, I have given a couple examples. One of them is by uh, Pandoc itself on Pandoc's site, and this shows how to create an ebook with Pandoc using multiple markdown files, each file being a chapter, and then brought together with Pandoc using CSS to create the styling for the ebook. Another example of what can be done with Pandoc is using Pandoc to create full websites. This website first gave me the ideas to build my own personal website with Markdown and Pandoc. And then finally, the last example with Pandoc I provide on the resources page is Pandoc for Academic Web Texts. When I first started to, to learn Markdown and started to venture into using Pandoc, I came across this great tutorial on the Programming Historian site. The Programming Historian is a peer-reviewed publication for tutorials and lessons in the digital humanities. This site is great for introducing how to use Markdown and Pandoc to create what is often referred to as reproducible academic scholarship. With the remaining part of this video, I'm going to provide a demonstration of some of the basic conversion functions that make Pandoc so useful for those interested in Markdown. First of all, Pandoc is a command line program, meaning you run it from the command line within a terminal. Now, my operating system is Linux, but Mac or OS X users also have the same option to use a terminal uh, It's built in. Now, window users have a very limited terminal space, and often it's recommended to uh, install some uh, bash terminal or bash command line for Windows users. I won't get into that here. Uh, I'm assuming that most users, if they're interested in this, will take the time to learn that part. Uh, what I want to provide is just a demonstration for those who may be interested in Pandoc or interested in moving into an advanced understanding of Markdown using Pandoc and what is possible uh, were you to do so. So the first thing we want to do is replicate the conversion from the previous video where we used stack edit to turn history.markdown into a styled HTML page. Of course, in this case, now we're going to use Pandoc to do that. So the first thing we need to do is tell the terminal to move into the desktop where our files are located. So we do that by typing CD change directory space desk desktop. Now we're in the desktop directory. If we type ls, we can see its contents. And we can see we have the terminal pointed at the desktop where our files are. Now, to call Pandoc, since it's a command line program, we just write Pandoc at the command line. And then space, we give it the input, which is history.md. After that, we designate an output, history.html. Now, by giving it the extension of HTML, Pandoc knows to convert the, the Markdown file to the HTML format. Next, we want to give it our CSS file, 
which of course is screen.css as we see on the desktop. And then the last thing is a command for pandoc called standalone, which is designated with minus s. And then we'll hit enter. Now we can open this and see how it looks. And success, we have replicated the same page output that we had from our stack edit conversion. So the next thing I want to display for you using Pandoc is how to use bash scripting to do more complicated things with Pandoc. Now for this example, I'm gonna do a very simple bash script and I'm going to give a, a short description of what that is. Um, but all, what, all we plan to do with this bash script is take history.md and go from one input as we already had here previously and then have three outputs. We will have the HTML file still and then two additional ones of a Word doc file and a PDF file. And so we'll use Pandoc to go from one input to three outputs. So we'll do this with the basic text editor in the terminal. You can use any text editor. You could use the basic text editor that comes with OSX. I use often the basic text editor that came with Linux called gedit. I also really like um, GitHub's new text editor called Atom. But for this example, I'm just gonna use Nano, which is a very basic text editor included with the bash terminal on Linux. So if I do Nano space, and then whatever the word I give after it will be the file name. So we'll use the term for this bash script called multi out. And then we'll give it the .sh for being a bash script. And then you have a very basic text editor. It's an empty file, we're going to write it now. So the first thing we want to do is give it this little command you see at the top. It basically tells the system this is a bash script. The next thing we want to write is that command we just wrote previously where we use pandoc to take the markdown and create a web page. And that's the same command we wrote before. Let me double check it here. Pandoc, history.md, history.html, screen.css minus s. Yes, that looks correct. And now right after this, we're going to type two more commands. We're going to give it the input again. And this time, we're going to tell it output equals history.docx. And again, since I gave it the docx dis, um, extension, Pandoc knows to turn it into a docx file. Now I see I forgot to put output up here, so I'm gonna add that in. And then I'm gonna create one more. So there you have it, we have one input and three outputs. Now, the, there are ways of writing a single command that does this all on one line. Um, I'm using this, um, re replicating three separate commands to show you how you can use a bash script to do multiple terminal commands. Now, I use this same logic to actually create my whole personal website, which I showed earlier in this video. I don't use this exact logic you see on the screen here, but the basic logic of using a bash script to do multiple pandoc commands to create a more complex set of documents or pages. Now in this case, we're taking one input and creating three outputs. In the case of my website, I take multiple markdown files, convert them to multiple HTML pages, and add navigation to all of them using pandoc. So in this example, we're gonna go ahead and save it. And we'll call it multi out. And then there's one more thing we need to do. Now you see it appeared on the desktop, which is good. So the next thing we need to do is just make this an executable file. We do that with the chmod plus x command. And then we type the name of the file. And now we can call the file. And all this is gonna do when I hit enter here, it's going to take the bash script on the desktop. It's gonna run those three commands and from one input, create three outputs. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to type the multi out dot sh. And there we go. So now it um even though you didn't see it it actually took it actually rewrote the HTML. So we now have three outputs from one input all using markdown. So let's open up the PDF and look at it. And you can see it's nicely styled. Now in this case I didn't use CSS. That's for a specific reason. Pandoc uses a markup language called LaTeX for doing its PDFs. Now you can create templates in LaTeX for Pandoc as well. Uh, again, I'm not going to show that in this video. That's another complex step that's worth learning if you're going to do a lot with LaTeX and PD with uh, Pandoc and PDFs. But for this, I just wanted to show you how nice the basic output looks, even without any additional styling. And again, we have the Word file, also generated by our Markdown. Now this is in LibreOffice. So LibreOffice doesn't look as good with Word files as if I would have opened this in Microsoft Word. I don't use Microsoft Word because I prefer open source software, but I wanted to just show you that it effectively takes Markdown and turns it into a Word file. So if you're someone like me who is interested in moving to Markdown for all your drafting and all your initial writing and free writes, is what, which is what I now do with Markdown, it's useful to be able to convert it to a Word file for when you're ready to turn it into a more polished document and begin revising it for a first full draft. So the final thing I want to show you is the logic behind my own personal site using Pandoc. As I showed earlier in the video, my own personal site is made totally from Markdown and then converted with Pandoc and an HTML template. Here are the files on my GitHub page, which is totally open to the public. You can come in and look at these and see how I construct my site using Pandoc. And I have a file here called compile. Now this is a bash script, the same as what we just created before. This one's a little more complicated. You can see that I have put my Pandoc commands in block style. So rather than having them as a single line, I have these little indicators that say the line continues. This allows me to organize my code in a nice visual style. So you can see with my home page, I create this by calling my markdown from the markdown folder that holds my markdown file. So I call home.markdown. I style it with my CSS. I add the template for the body of the HTML. I designate the output. I tell it smart. Smart specifically uh, adds in a few in-text styling that makes the text uh, more readable. And then I have my header and footer templates that I do with the include before body, include after body pandoc commands. And then I also add a title prefix to the page. And I do this for all the pages of my site. So I have three pages on my site. I replicate the same thing three times to create all the pages of my site. So each one created with the Pandoc commands you see on this page. And if we come back here, you can see all of the markdown files are very simple. So it, whenever I want to edit something on my page, I just come in and edit the markdown. And then I run my bash script like we just saw in the previous video. And it creates the site. Now it took me a while to figure that out and it took a while to understand how to use Pandoc. It's certainly an investment, but I think an investment that's worth it because having started with something approachable like Markdown, I was able to slowly figure out more and more about CSS and HTML, slowly become more comfortable with the terminal and the command line and with scripting. And eventually I've moved into learning HTML and CSS directly now, but I still love Markdown. I still do all of my drafting in Markdown and think it's a very writer friendly way to write for the internet and to write web text.